Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to look at how to get the yield to maturity for a bond by using Excel Solver. And I'm going to go through the basics of bond pricing and a basic concrete example of how we'd use Excel Solver to solve for that yield to maturity. Now the yield to maturity, sometimes called the cost of debt, is simply the discount rate that sets the present value of all future cash flows equal to the price that you observe for that bond. So in that case, it has some analogies to the internal rate of return or the IRR. And it's going to be relatively straightforward for us to get using Excel Solver. So with that in mind, like I said, I'm going to go through firstly the basics of bond pricing, then I'm going to go through a concrete example using Microsoft Excel. In order for us to really go through how to get the yield in Excel, we first need to discuss the very basics of bond pricing. And I'm only going to discuss this relatively briefly and just to the extent that we need to in order to be able to solve for the yield in Excel. So when we're pricing the bond, it has two major components, the coupon component and the face value component. And the price of the bond is the present value of all cash flows that bond is going to generate. Now in the coupon component, what we have here is you have the coupon per period, i.e. C, multiplied through by an annuity factor. And the bit in square brackets is effectively representing the value of an annuity, which is paying you a constant rate into the future, in this case for N by M periods, i.e. if we've got a semi-annual coupon bond and we've got five years, we're going to have 10 periods here, i.e. N multiplied by M. In this case, what we do is we're discounting these coupons back at the yield to maturity, which I've called R in this case, where R is the yield, otherwise known as the discount rate or the cost of debt. That's effectively what we're going to need to solve for. The second component of this takes our face value, IFV, which is generally going to be standardized, and we discount that back to the present value, again, discounting it back at the yield to maturity. So it's a relatively straightforward process. We're discounting back all our future cash flows at the yield to maturity which is what we need to solve for. However, you'll notice here that there's no closed form solution, i.e. we can't just go through and mathematically solve this. We're going to need to iterate through all of the possible opportunities and options for the yield to maturity. This is obviously super labor intensive, and we need something like Excel for us to be able to do that. And in particular, I'm going to be focusing on Excel Solver. So with that in mind, let's look at some concrete numbers to see how this functions. And it turns out it really is not that difficult once we go through a concrete example. So let's set up an example of how we'd go through and get our yield to maturity. And it turns out it's relatively straightforward. So suppose we observe a bond where we've got a face value of a thousand. That's going to be given to you in the term sheet and the terms of that bond, relatively easy to observe. Suppose our bond has five years to maturity left for it. This is going to be just observed it's based on how long until the bond ends. Suppose the bond pays semi-annual coupons. Now that's relatively normal. Bonds will often pay semi-annual coupons, but the approach here will apply regardless of periodicity. Those coupons could be paid annually or they could be paid quarterly or monthly or whatever. It doesn't really matter. The same approach applies using Excel Solver. Now suppose here our coupon rate is 7%. That implies $70 total coupons per year or in our case, $35 per period. Of course, we've got semi-annual periodicity. Now, suppose the observed price for our bond is $1,065. I.e., just look at the market, you see it's trading for $1,065. We're going to use this observed price to back out a proposed yield to maturity, which is effectively going to be the discount rate that forces our present value of all of our future payments to equal $1,065. You can think of it as being somewhat analogous to an internal rate of return, i.e. it's the rate of return, the discount rate, that forces the present value of our future cash flows to equal 1,065. Now we can do this in Excel relatively easily using Excel Solver. So with that in mind, let's go into Excel and see how to do this. Here we are in Excel, and we can start by going through our bond pricing example. And basically what we need to do here is we firstly need to enter in the various values for our bond. Then we use these values to calculate the present value of the coupons and the face value. And then we set our total value equal to the price that we've been given by changing the yield to maturity. So let's see how this exactly works. 
So we'll enter our face value, which is just $1,000 that started. In this case, we have five years for until maturity. We have two periods per year, so we've got semi-annual coupons. Here, we're told the coupon rate is 7%. The price we're told is $1,065. Now, in order to go through this, we're firstly going to need to enter a dummy yield to maturity. So I'm just going to enter 6% here, but we are going to alter that yield to maturity using Excel Solver. So this is going to be subject to change, and I'll highlight it yellow to symbolize that. Now, what we then need to do is we need to calculate through a dummy present value of the coupons and the face value, then a total value for the bond, and then we set our total value for the bond subject to 1,065 by changing the yield. So let's see how this works. Firstly, we'll calculate the present value of the coupons. So to do this, we of course need to take our coupon per period, which in this case is going to be 7%. Then we divide that through by two, which is going to give us 3.5% per period. Then we multiply that by the face value of the bond. That's going to give us a coupon per period. We then need to multiply that by the annuity factor. The annuity factor here, of course, has in the numerator one minus, then one plus, the yield to maturity per period. So that's going to be in our case, 6% divided through by two. And then we need to take that all to the power of the total number of periods. So that's to the power of in this case, minus then two multiplied by five. And that will give us the numerator of our annuity formula. Then what we need to do is we divide through by the yield per period. So in our case, we're going to be dividing through by 6% divided through by two periods in this case. And then we need to make sure our parentheses balance. And this will give us the present value of the coupon. The next thing we need to do is we calculate the present value of our face value. So here, all we do is we take our face value and discount it back. So in this case, that's going to be $1,000 as our face value, divide through by one plus the yield to maturity per period. So that's going to be 6% divided through by two and then that's all to the power of the total number of periods. So in this case, that's two multiplied by five, and that will give us the present value of our face value. Then the next thing we do is we calculate the total, which is simply equal to the summation of these. So when we've calculated our present value of our coupons and our face value with a yield of 6%, we end up with a total valuation of 1,045 you'll notice that that is not equal to 1,065. So we will need to use Excel Solver in order to set 1,042 equal to 1,045. So let's see how we do that. So in order to use Excel Solver, we need to go to the Data tab and then to Solver in the Analysis section here. If you do not see that, the way to get Solver is you go to File, and then after you go to File, you go down to More or down to Options, depending on how yours looks like. So you go to More, and then to options. Then what you need to do is you need to go to add-ins. Then once you've gone to add-ins, you should be able to go to manage with the Excel add-ins at the very bottom, and you click go. This should then enable you to select solver. In my case, it's already selected and installed, so I will cancel out of this. But in your case, if it is not, you would select solver and then click OK. So once you've got solver installed, what you need to do is you need to bring up solver. Once you've brought up Solver, what you need to do is you need to subject, uh, select the objective, which is your total here, and you need to set your objective equal to a value of, in this case, 1,065. And you do this by changing the yield cell here, so 6%. So once you've set this up to set your objective, i.e. your total value of the bond, to the value of 1,065 by changing your yield, you can click Solve. Excel is then going to iterate through the solutions and will find you a solution. Then I'm going to click OK. Now here you'll notice that the yield that Excel comes up with is about 5.5%. It obviously has quite a number of decimal places. And this is how we get the yield to maturity in any situation if you've been given the price of the bond and need to go through and solve it. So it is a relatively straightforward process once you know what to do. So that's how we get the yield to maturity for a bond using Excel Solver. Now, I hope this video has been informative to you. I hope it has given you some insight into the basics of bond pricing and how straightforward it is, in fact, to use Solver to solve for that yield to maturity. So thanks so much for listening to this video. 
Like I said, I hope it's been informative and useful to you, and I hope it hasn't been too dreary. In any case, I very much wish you the best of luck with all of your bond pricing, and I hope to see you for future videos. Bye.